And like always, I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of your next steps if you're a new user to the Investment Dominator. And, uh, and then we'll just open it up for questions. Um, I will be adding an, uh, probably uh, another session. Um, uh, right now, this is the last session that's scheduled, but um, I was going to add another session right before this call, but I didn't have a chance. Um, I just came from another call. So uh, right after this, I will add another uh, session, but it will be a few weeks from, from today. I, I am going to be out of town for a little bit, and so it's going to be when I get back. Um, and you'll get a, 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 an email from the GoTo um, uh, webinar software when the next session will be, if you want to jump on that. Uh, but we did quite, get quite a bit of questions last week, so I wanted to add another uh, a session. Um, all right, so like I said, as always, let's start a talk a little bit about the next steps. Um, in the previous calls, um, I, we talked about uh, setting up the uh, Investment Dominator and customized site. We talked about setting up your profile. Um, all that is used in your mailings, um, uh, and uh, and that's kind of like the very first step you need to do is configure the system for you. Um, then we talked about uh, sending out your letters, taking your calls, uh, which is obviously the next step after people call in, how to look them up with the owner ID number. Uh, we talked about having two different IDs, one for your properties, uh, which is this number right here. These are your property ID numbers. And then <clears throat> the number that is listed on or printed on your letters are actually what is called the owner ID number. And uh, that uh, owner ID number uh, is how you reference um, or pull up the, pro the property records when somebody calls back. That's the, the, the best way to find them because if an owner owns multiple properties, we always still send one letter. And on that one letter, we have the owner ID number and if you put that in there you should be able to bring up all properties that they own um, which is the best way to, to process these calls. All right <clears throat> moving on to uh, talking about a new uh, subject here is once you start processing these um, phone calls the next step is obviously to do some research on the properties. Um, we talked about last week moving the very first thing you do is move the status of the property from a mailed letter one status into the uh, pending preliminary research status which is the next step that Jack talks about in the land profit generator uh, where you're going to do some research on the property uh, enough to make you you know enough to make an offer basically um, and it doesn't have to be the detailed stuff uh, which you really are going to get into when they accept it um, so in the beginning, you just need to make do enough research, as the uh, land profit generator explains, um, uh, just enough for you to make that offer. And you'll notice that there's a difference between you know your records and different statuses. And uh, for example, when you move it into this pending preliminary research status, uh, a, a calculator comes up here. Um, so you de get different options as you move the properties through the different. Um, statuses or stages of, of a deal. Um, so when you're in the pending preliminary research stage, uh, one of the things that you want to do, or there's a couple things that you want to do. Um, you want to be opening up these records um, and going under the edit screen here. And uh, uh, one thing you'll notice is uh, you do get the offer calculator, but you're not getting any of the comps uh, capabilities. Um, and in order to enable that, you got to enter in at least a property zip code. Okay, so uh, one of the requirements is it's got to be in the right status, which is the pending preliminary research status. But you also need a zip code for the property. And uh, sometimes you get that in your original list from the county. Uh, and if you do, you can import that like we talked about in week one. Um, and if you if you had imported the property zip codes, then you should see right away your um, your comparable options up here. But if you don't see that, then what's happening is you're missing the property zip code. And if we toggle all these sec sections down here, we take a look at the property information uh, uh, section. You can see here there's a field called property zip code. And once we get a zip code for this property, we can uh, look it up, and um, <clears throat> and you'll you will save the record, and we'll take a look at uh, the the comparable. So I want to show you how to do that. 
Um, typically, you're going to get a um, you're going to get you know obviously the APN from the county, and typically counties will have GIS systems, um, so you can get the typically the zip code um, from the GIS uh, uh, county website. Um, if you click on the parcel, they should be able to give you either a GPS coordinate um, to that parcel, or um, uh, or they're going to give you um, some information like in the, the short legal descriptions to help you find the GPS coordinate to the property. Um, some properties might have an actual street address, but most that I've seen do not. Uh, and it really depends on the area. So if you're working in more of a rural area, then you're not going to get a street address uh, typically. Even if it's subdivided, a lot of times they don't give you a street address. Um, uh, you might see what's, you know, a situs address in there, but they won't actually have a street number. And you need that street number, you know, like 123 Main Street, uh, in order to map out the properties. Um, it, because just having the street name like Main Street is not going to really help you. So the first kind of thing that you want to work on is either calling the county or looking at the county GIS systems to try to find out what the property zip code. And like I said, you usually go to the county GIS system, look up the property by APN, and then using that, um, you can go to, uh, a lot of them actually have an integration now with Maps, uh, with Google um, Maps. But it, even if they don't have a, um, even if they don't have a integration with Google Maps, what you can do is is find the property, kind of compare it to the county data, find the property on Google Maps, and what you can do is click anywhere on the map. So if the, if you know the property is in this neighborhood, let's say, um, then you just click in this neighborhood, and Google will give you the uh, the zip code of the property. So that's. Uh, uh, let me just show you again. I'm going to get out of the city here because most of these properties will be probably out of the city. But for example, let's say that you're, the property you're looking at is up here somewhere, um, like this lot right here. You could click on the lot itself and uh, when you're under maps.google.com. They give you a GPS coordinate, but they also give you a zip code. So that's, that's the key is the zip code. Um, of the property and zip codes are quite big so usually if you're in the you know square mile you're fine uh, you don't have to be actually right on the property um, you could be pretty close by the property and you're in this usually in the same zip code especially if it's a rural property um, usually those those zip codes are are pretty uh, big areas uh, so once you get the zip code you're gonna paste it or you're gonna enter it in under where it says property zip code and uh, save the record uh, by clicking the update record uh, button at the top. And once you do that, you can see that my screen changes a little bit and I have a lot more options because with uh, Realtor.com, Trulia, and Landwatch, and Zillow.com, these are all based on the zip code and if you also have entered in the acreage. Um, the zip code is the required one, but the acreage also helps uh, kind of filter the results down on uh, on these sites. Now we do pull all uh, four of these sites, the data from all four of these sites, for a reason. Um, and you can you can learn more about this in the Land Profit Generator course itself, where Jack talks about how we are actually comping out these properties. Um, but just kind of a, a refresher, um, it, we don't use like the Zillow Zestimate or anything like that. We're not using a calculated number like a realtor would use, uh, where we're just averaging everything up. We actually have a different way of of comping out the property. So you'll, uh, if you're unfamiliar with that, go back into the um, land profit generator course itself. Take a look at when Jack talks about how he does his research. I think I believe it's like module eight or so where he talks about that. And, uh, and and take a look at that because there is a different way of, of comping it out that we use. And we act, there's actually um, um, uh, a few different ways depending on how much data you have. So, so some areas, uh, like the rural, more rural areas, they will not have uh, uh, compar comparables. So for example, you might not have sold data from the last year. You might not have listed data from the last year. Yet you can still comp out land. And Jack talks about that in uh, the land profit generator, how he would do that. Um, so there is a reason why we pull it this way, and we're not just 
you know, pulling the Zestimate number that Zillow gives, for example, or we're not just aver averaging up, um, you know, listed or sold data. All right, so take a look at the in, uh, the land profit generator to get more details on that. But then th these tools right here are designed uh, to help you with that process of what Jack teaches. Um, but what I really want to get across um, is the fact that it, it does require you to be in the right status, number one, and number two, to have a zip code. Uh, without those two uh, pieces of information, you're not going to even see these options. Um, and then if you can enter in the property size, that also assists in the comp comp comping out of stuff. You'll notice also that if you enter in the property address or the longitude and latitude, like in the case of this one right here, if we you just go back to this example, I think I lost this one, but let's say it's this property right, uh, right, right here, let's say, uh, you can see there's a GPS coordinate, and if you you can actually enter in either a street address, if it's a full street address, or the latitude and longitude here. So I could just paste this in um, to this section right here for the property address. And like I said, in a lot of cases it, with land, this is what you're going to get. Um, and uh, if you update the record, you'll see that you have another option, which is the mapping option, which maps out the property um, to that location and allows you to uh, not only pull up the property quickly from within the investment dominator but later on if you do buy the property uh, end up buying the property the you know the owners end up accepting your offers this embedded map is actually going to be automatically added to your property listing okay because this is this entire process of buying the property um, as you do the research on making your offers and then when you know when the owners accept your offers and you, you take it to closing and you do your detailed research, that is also still part of the process of building your listing. So by the time you get to the, the, the stage of where you're selling the property, when, when you actually have it in escrow and, and you can start marketing the property for sale, you're actually pretty much done with your listing. Uh, everything is being pulled in the background. Um, and all you really need to do at that point is, uh, if we toggle these sections down, all you really need to be doing at that point is be filling out the section called property listing, which is not a whole lot of fields. But this is where you would add like your headline to your listing, your subheadline to your listing, your property description, um, your sales price, which is a required field um, for the listing itself. So you do need to have a sales price there uh, for it to even generate. And then also where it says listing agent's name and, or company and listing agent's phone, this actually could be you as well. It's whoever you want to take the phone calls when it, in regards to that property when you go to sell it, uh, you know, their name, their phone number. Um, and then the other thing that you do at that point would be to upload your photos. Um, and I think I showed this before, but I'll show it again. You, when you go down to the bottom here, you can click uh, upload your files. Uh, you can go and find your files here. Uh, let me find an area. Let's see. Just go over here. Just go to. Uh, I have a folder in here with some files. All right. So, for example, here. You can actually up, um, hold down your control key or your shift key. Um, and basically select the files that you want. Um, so you can have multiple files that you upload. And they can also be pictures or they can be attachments. Like if you have attachments like uh, disclosures and things like that that you want to attach to the listing. Uh, or even if you don't want to attach it to the listing but you want to keep track of it, you can select those and you basically hit open. It loads a preview of it and you want to hit this button that says start upload. And that's going to load these files to your listing. Um, and uh, you control whether it shows up on the front end of your site or not. So if you want it to show up on your, basically on your selling site, at, uh, on your listing, you, you would check this uh, option that says public. And as soon as you check the public option, it's going to be added to your public listing that you're building in the background. Um, if it's unchecked, then it's just for your reference only. You can only view it from the, the admin console here. Um, but it won't be viewable um, 
the other thing that, uh, and the same thing works for files here. So if you have like the, uh, you know, PDF attachments or anything like that, if you ch if you select public, then it's going to show up on your listing as a uh, attached PDF. But if you don't, then it's not. Um, you can also save some captions, like this is the.
you would pull up any other, you know, user guide articles. Um, so if you have questions on, like, you know, uh, for example, All right, I hope that helps uh, with that. Uh, Robert said he actually lost the audio during at some point. I'm not I'm not quite sure. Let's see. My audio is still on. Can we do a quick survey to see if uh, the audio came back? Uh, if, if you guys can uh, send in a, a little comment under the question box here, just let me know if you hear my audio. Because um, I did get a few people to say at some point it got lost. It said, it, okay, 30 seconds came, about 30 seconds ago it came back. Okay. All right. 